Hi everyone, so as, as Manuel said, I'm Alejandro Cano, I'm a PhD student uh, in collaboration with GMV and I'm going to give you my second talk, uh, my second PhD talk about uh, my um, thesis which is named Advanced Methods for Orbital Uncertainty Characterization Applied to Space Surveillance and Tracking. So I'll go first again through an introduction about my problem and the state of the art and then uh, I will briefly state the main parts of my methodology and I will uh, provide you with the most recent results of the last year. So now, what, what do we do here in the space debris domain? So we start with a bunch of measurements uh, taken for an object, and we aim to estimate the state and its covariance, which is typically which is typically the uncertainty representation under Gaussian assumptions. So we apply the generally batch least square methods to have an estimated arc and estimated state. And this comes with an associated uh, covariance, which is uh, computed by means of the uh, so-called normal equations. Basically, considering the uncertainty that we have in the measurements, the, acu the expected accuracy of the measurements. That gives the nominal covariance, the typical covariance that we have. But then, in SST, what we need to do is to propagate this state and covariance into the future to give several products, such as collision risk, uh, reentry analysis, and so on. So we propagate this to the future and have that nominal covariance propagated to the future. However, which are uh, the main problems that we're facing here? That the dynamical and measurements model that we use to estimate the state and propagate them have a lot of uncertainty there. We have a lot of uh, unknown error sources, such as the atmospheric drag, solar pr proxies prediction, uh, solar radiation pressure, time bias, and the batch least square processes, operational processes, do not take this into account. This leads to a bunch of possible states, possible orbits that are not being modeled here because those are the processes do not take them into account. This leads to a lack of realism, especially when you go to the propagation part. And therefore, the nominal covariance is no longer representative of the uncertainty that we have in the system. This is the lack of realism problem, and this is the problem that we want to, to uh, minimize, uh, or at least to try to solve having a covariance that is more representative of the real uncertainty of our system. As a very brief uh, summary of the state of the art, uh, what the community is typically trying to do here to represent, to model the uncertainty, uh, sometimes they go for stochastic modeling. This is uh, really complex models to represent the aleatory behavior of the, uh, for instance, the atmosphere. However, these methods, uh, though being really precise and really good, have the uh, this advantage of being really complex to be ap applied for operational purposes and are sometimes uh, really, really time consuming. For instance, you have to integrate the stochastic dynamics, uh, stochastic uh, differential equations, and that's really, really time uh, consuming for operational purposes. Another alternative then is going for Gaussian processes, Gaussian noise, such as the well-known uh, process noise uh, in most filtering applications or consider parameters for batch algorithms. The problem here is that though having lower complexity and much more time uh, being much more time efficient, we still have the problem of uh, we need to trim those models to estimate those models in order for them to be actually a good representation of the uncertainty. And then another field, another wide variety of uh, uncertainty estimate and meth estimation methodology are uh, covariance inflation, as empirical covariances, or Monte Carlo techniques. The main problem of covariance inflation, uh, artificial covariance inflation techniques, is that you lose the physical interpretation of the uncertainty that, that you're trying to model. Basically, what they do here is um, they multiply their covariance by several factors just to try to make them bigger or more representative. Even though they're simpler and faster, uh, they do not uh, really match the physical knowledge that we have of the dynamics. So, what are we trying to do here, which is the main core of my methodology? So we try to model the uncertainty with the so-called considered parameter theory. What this theory does is that you, uh, you include additional parameters in the dynamics. Oh, yeah, so this pointer is not working here. Uh, so you have to include additional parameters in the dynamic, for instance, as this parameter here added to the drag equation, which is defined to have a null mean, but a certain variance, a certain uncertainty, which we try to put here to englobe, to represent the missing uncertainty that we have in our system. Uh, this theory allows us to uh, correct the covariance with this noise of the parameters to the so-called considered covariance. Then, if we are doing this right, if we are doing things properly, the dispersion of our orbital state would be represented by a mean state and this covariance. Only in that case 
we would have what is called a realistic covariance. However, which are the main problems that we have here? That the variance of these parameters, this is the uncertainty inside our model, is still not known. This is what we need to estimate to make it uh, more realistic. How are we trying to do it? Well, we resort to the so-called, uh, the well-known Mahanavi distance, which is a measure of how far your sample is from a mean as uh, um, and that projected into the covariance space. The theory is that if you have a realistic covariance here, then a bunch of state differences, so the dispersion of your state, should follow a key square distribution once normalized by that covariance. So knowing that, what we do then is having that model, we uh, take a bunch of orbit differences from the so-called operational Monte Carlo. This is exactly the same processes that we have in space debris. We have a bunch of orbits estimated and propagated daily, done routinely. We take that population and apply our methodology uh, with, uh, with uh, Mahanovich distances. Then, if we have a cost function statistic, such as uh, Kramer von Mises or Kolmogorov Smirnov, we can try and estimate the missing variance so that our initial very badly distributed Mahanovich distances is finally able to represent the expected theoretical behavior of a key square distribution, which is shown here in the red line. So our blue, the observed Mahanovich distribution, is now much more similar to the theory, so it's more realistic. So this is what we're trying to do operationally, and what we're trying to do in different scenarios. Now, let us see some, uh, some results. So uh, this is so far similar to what I presented last year, so we were trying to move on to different uh, uncertainty sources being uh, analyzed here. We focused on atmospheric drag, range bias, and also solar proxies prediction in LEO, and solar radiation pressure and time bias in GEO. Uh, during last year, uh, we were able to uh, publish uh, oops, uh, in two different journals the results of uh, full simulations in LEO and in GEO. Here you have some of the examples of the results. Here we are simultaneously optimizing for three different considered parameters, and we are able to have a really good covariance realism as compared to the theory. And uh, the good, uh, the, the most the most important advantages of this methodology is that we are not oversizing the covariances. We are having a really good improvement in the realism of the covariances. And it's a methodology that allows you to trace, to keep track of the actual uncertainty that, that you have in your system. So it's not a black box where you are just trying to in, increase your covariance. You have specific sources. Drag error, time bias error, range error, whatever. So. After that, uh, one of the advances that we did last year is, OK, we have been doing many experiments and analysis uh, with one object during a, lot of, uh, during a large amount of time. So we went now to uh, apply our methodology to a catalog of objects. So we uh, assumed uh, an, uh, an uncertainty that would um, change with altitude as this, uh, coming from other studies, of course. And we try to apply our methodology not to a single satellite, but to a bunch of satellites at the same time, having different altitudes, different shapes, different uh, areas, and mass to, area to mass ratios, and so on. Our methodology was quite su successful to, to determine the parameters of the uncertainty model. And um, this uh, work is uh, right now uh, under revision in the Journal of the Astronautical Sciences. Another important application that we worked on last year is uh, the collision risk. So one of the most uh, the, the most important products that we have in space debris is the, uh, pre the, pro the, the to produce collision risk estimates. And for that, the covariance uh, matrix is one of the most important uh, qu physical quantities. So what, what I'm showing here is a comparison of the uh, probability of collision here at the left with the time to TCA. This is the time to the closest approach. approach. Operationally, something above 10 to, the, 10 to the minus 4 is considered a warning. Um, be, um, above 10 to the power of minus 3, it's a serious warning. <laughs> and uh, here I'm showing you two different cases, one high risk event and one false alarm event. I'm comparing three different covariances here for the computation of the probability of collision. The noise only covariance without any correction, just as the measurements come the green one, which is my corrected covariance with our methodology, and the orange one is the so-called scaled probability of collision, which is what the CNES, the French 
space agency does for collision uh, analysis. Here on the left, you can see that our covariance is uh, for a really high risk event, is able to raise the alarm even, even faster than they're doing, and the risk is maintained over time. But here, in the case of a false alarm, which is where our methodology is much more is much better, we are able to de to, to detect that the that the actual event is a false alarm much faster because we're actually tracking the physical uncertainty that we have in our system, not just multiplying by factors. And that's why they only they are only able to see that it's a false alarm barely a day before the event, where we are able to see it three or four days before the event, which is a quite uh, quite good result. And then, uh, just to finish with the current uh, analysis and studies that we're doing. So, as I said before, um, the problem with Gaussian uncertainty is that sometimes it's not fully representative of the, the reality of the system. Uh, however, complex stochastic models are impractical, impractical for uh, operational purposes. What we're doing here is we're trying to merge both. So, we know how to deal with uh, Gaussian uncertainty and consider parameters very efficiently. So we're trying now to model and map uh, complex stochastic noise errors as if they were uh, constant uh, parameters with a really uh, much more complex methodology that I can show here in this time that I have, and map that into the covariance growth or the covariance estimation directly without, re without having to integrate the stochastic dynamic equations or resort to Monte Carlo methods. So far, we have uh, published these, uh, the results for covariance propagation in, uh, in a conference with really good results, uh, considering just a 10% error in some uh, small cases uh, for uh, an 800 kilometers altitude, a bit higher for a lower altitude. And now we're working on how to present this for estimation, not only for propagation. This is the main work in progress for the rest of my, my year which in case I didn't say, I'm in the middle of my third year, so I just should have around a year more or so, if everything goes fine. And the most important result here is that we are having a more than 75% of time improvement uh, as compared to Monte Carlo. Yeah, this is, the last, this is the last slide. So just to finish, uh, this is a summary of the achievements as uh, Manuel asked me, asked everyone to do. I uh, presented in, uh, so far in these uh, two and a half years, uh, uh, six conferences, uh, two, two published journal papers, one on the go, uh, and I'm planning on attending two next two conference two conferences this year, which I've already been accept, accepted. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs>